So I've been fortunate enough to be able to ride both the Shimano GRX 1x and 2x mechanical drivetrains for an extended period of time, and I want to share my thoughts on both systems and highlight what I think are the pros and cons of each. Now I should warn you, I'm going to put on my nerd hat, and it's going to get a little bit technical when we start talking about gear ratios and the percentage jumps between gears on each system, but I'll try and keep the emphasis on my personal experiences with both drivetrains since I've already posted an in-depth numerical analysis on the 1x and 2x GRX systems. Here. If this is your first time here, thanks for dropping by. This channel features reviews, how-tos, and some nerdy deep dives into the world of cycling, all filtered through this extra average cyclist with a technical background. If you like this type of content, consider showing your support by hitting the subscribe button or picking up some new sticker designs in the online shop. This one in particular pays homage to the premier bike tooling brand and should appeal to all the true bike nerds out there. Now the drivetrains that I've been riding are both the mid-range GRX 600 systems with 11-speed rear derailleurs. The one by system has a 40 tooth chainring and an 11 to 42 cog cassette and uses a GRX 812 derailleur. The two by setup has 46 and 30 tooth chainrings up front and an 11 to 34 cassette in the back with the GRX 810 derailleur. Now just for a quick refresher, the two by setup is considered to be the standard on drop bar road bikes. That much is undeniable. It's tried and tested and super dialed at this point with no major flaws. The newcomer, relatively speaking, is the one by drivetrain, which does away with the front derailleur and relies entirely on the cassette for the range of gears. Now, one by technology has become the standard on nearly all mountain bikes, but is starting to make its way into the drop bar bike realm as well, more so within the gravel slash all road category, but even proper road bikes have recently been experimenting with one by systems. Now, the benefit of a one by system is basically just simpler setup with fewer moving parts. Eliminating the front derailleur simplifies shifting and reduces maintenance requirements on the bike. Now, I'd argue that one of the reasons that one by systems have earned even some acceptance on drop bar bikes is that the two by drivetrain does exhibit a large degree of overlap between the gears. Now, depending on the threshold you use to define the uniqueness of gear ratios, it can be argued that the two by 11 drivetrain which technically has 22 speeds, actually only has between 14 and 16 unique gear combinations. Now this makes a 1x11 system seem much more appealing, and the thought then becomes, well, can we get away with using a 1x system with 11, 12, and even 13 gears to span that effective 14 gear range of a 2x setup? Again, all this is discussed at length in my in-depth gear ratio video linked in the description, but looking at the numbers briefly, it's pretty clear that the 1x11 GRX system almost covers the range of the 2x system with small truncations on either end of the range, but a little bit more on this later. Now the second and perhaps bigger discussion then becomes, well, what about the jumps between the gears? If 11 speeds are to cover the same range as 14, 15, or 16 speeds, then each gear jump on the 1x system has to be larger by definition. And are those bigger jumps going to negatively impact your cycling and slow you down, since you may not always be able to find precisely the gear that you want? Well, again, it's not quite as simple as it first appears. Now, it turns out that when you actually compute the jumps between the gears, the increases in jumps on the 1x system aren't uniformly distributed across the entire range of gears. Now, for instance, it's not as though on a 1x setup, the gap between every gear is increased by 5%. Rather, on the top end of the cassette where the cogs are smaller, the jumps between the gears are actually identical on the GRX 1x and 2x systems, which is logical because you'd like to have those fine increments when you're riding up at speed. Now, a quick look at the numbers shows that the first six cogs on each cassette are actually the same. You have 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, and 21 teeth. What ends up happening then is that the larger jumps between the gears are relegated to the lower climbing gears or the bigger cogs, where in principle, smaller jumps between gears are less important. Now this is apparent by looking at this plot, which shows that the larger percentage jumps occur in the climbing gears, whereas in the faster gears, or equivalently the smaller cogs on the cassette, the jumps are actually the same on both the GRX 1x and 2x cassettes. Now if you take a look at the brand new Campagnolo Eckhart 1x13 rear cassette, you can actually see this visually as the size of the cogs varies non-linearly, with the bigger jumps clearly occurring at the larger end of the cassette, which represents the lower climbing gears. And then by the time you get to the faster end of the cassette, it almost looks like a standard road cassette with really fine incremental jumps between the gears. 
So all of this to say the one by system is really trying to do everything in its power to be an effective replacement for the tried and true two by setup. Sure, you'll lose a little bit of range and you'll get slightly larger jumps between gears, but again, those larger jumps are strategically placed down in the climbing gears where presumably it matters less. Now in exchange for these apparent drawbacks, you get a simpler system with less maintenance and consequently a greater degree of peace of mind. Now potentially you get a bit of weight savings as you are eliminating a front mech, a front chain ring, some shift cable and housing, but it can be argued that the weight savings are offset by throwing a much bigger cassette on there. So it could very well be a wash, but you'd have to weigh everything on your own particular setup to find out for sure. Now this is pretty much where my previous video wraps things up. I essentially gave you some numbers and pretty plots to look at, but I couldn't give you any real world feedback on how it actually translates to practical riding. But now, having actually ridden both systems for an extended period of time, I've got some thoughts that I figured I'd share with you. Now first, regarding the range, I do notice the limitation on the one by system. It's plain undeniable that there's less overall range. The numbers are clear and I felt it out on the bike. However, at the low end, you still get a low climbing ratio of 0.95 on the one by system, as opposed to the slightly easier 0.88 on the two by system, which isn't a huge difference, but you can certainly feel it. Now for the type of riding that I do, which rarely sees any extended climbs above 10 or 12%, the one by setup hasn't really been much of a limitation. Now sure, on some steeper sections or even on some longer steady uphill efforts, a lower granny gear would definitely be nice, but I feel like I could almost say the same thing about a two by setup. Now at the top end, I think the limitation matters even less as the calculated speed at 90 RPM on the one by system is just under 26 miles an hour, whereas on a two by system, it's a tad over 29 miles an hour. Now personally, I found that if I'm going much faster than 25 miles an hour, it's typically because I'm on a descent and I'm not usually pedaling anyways. So I don't usually feel that I'm spinning out on the one by setup. However, and this is a big caveat, I'm a very average cyclist, the self-proclaimed extra average cyclist to be precise, and I'm getting less and less concerned with average speed and power output with each passing year. Now my default setting is to ride at party pace, and consequently I'm more concerned with smiles per mile rather than miles per hour. So if you are a stronger rider who is serious and needs to be able to keep up in a fast group, or just doesn't like the idea of running out of gears on the top end, then you will certainly feel this upper limit on the GRX 1x system. Now, regarding the jumps between the gears, I really feel like the critics of 1x systems might seriously consider the nature of the gear jumps before dismissing it for a lack of fine spacing between the gears. Now, basically, what I've experienced on the 1x setup agrees with the numbers pretty spot on. That is to say, when I'm in the fast half of the cassette, motoring along on the flats at speeds above 15 or maybe 20 miles an hour, I don't actually notice any difference between the 1x and 2x systems, probably because there is none. Remember, in this section of the cassette, the jumps between the gears on the 1x and 2x system are identical. Then, when really grinding up long steep climbs, I also have to agree with the numbers in that I usually just pick a low gear and settle in for the climb. I'm not usually hurting to find some non-existent missing gear that only a 2x system could provide. Rather, I'm usually just hurting because I'm climbing up a steep hill. Now, it's only when I'm between these two states and need to put out power even when going relatively slow, say when cruising up a mild grade or rumbling along a rough gravelly trail, when I actually do notice a coarseness in the jumps between gears a bit. Now, sometimes I'll be hunting for a gear that just doesn't exist on the one by setup, and in that case, I'll have to make a choice to either put out more power to stay in the bigger gear or to just slow down a bit and spin in the lower gear. Now most of the time when this happens, I'll end up just backing off a little bit and I'll stay in the lower gear until I can settle into the cadence, which usually costs about two to three miles an hour, which I don't really mind as I'm never consciously holding a specific pace. Now, if this sounds like it might be a problem for you, then perhaps you should reconsider going one by, at least for the moment. So that kind of sums up my experience on the GRX one by setup. Now, I haven't mentioned too much about the experience of riding the GRX two by setup, because really there's not much to say. You get all the range you could possibly need, plus relatively fine increments between gears to keep you sailing along at just about any speed. And if you're already used to fiddling around with the front derailleur, then it's really an if it ain't broke, don't fix it situation. Now I'd argue that most of the one by critics probably come from a strict road background and really see no reason to mess around with a successful formula, and I totally appreciate that. However, I would say that after riding both systems for a while now, 
I'm actually still no closer to deciding which is the best drivetrain, so I hope you didn't come here for a definitive answer as to which system is best, because frankly, there isn't one. Now I, like most cyclists who came from riding a proper road bike, am used to thinking of 2 by systems as a gold standard, and when I'm on a drop bar bike, I'm used to using both hands to shift gears. To me, it's second nature to finesse the front and rear derailleurs to find the right gear on a 2 by setup, and so the one by system did take a bit of getting used to on a drop bar bike. However, I'm not a pure roadie turned gravel adventurer. I also ride a lot of mountain bikes, and my Santa Cruz high tower, like nearly all modern mountain bikes, has a one by drivetrain, which I'm also used to using. So the idea of mixing the two worlds on a one by equipped drop bar bike, for me wasn't too far fetched. After all, what is an adventure slash gravel bike, if not some sort of hybrid between a road bike and a mountain bike? Well, I just said a whole lot of something. Now, am I any closer to deciding what the superior system is? Not really. I really think that there's a spectrum of drop bar cyclists ranging from the hardcore two by lifers to adventure seeking minimalist one by adopters. And if you're on either end of that spectrum, then this video is probably pointless to you. And to be honest, I'm surprised you're still here. But if like me, you're on the fence about which system is better, then I feel for you. I'd say you really have to look inward and decide what type of cyclist you are and what type of riding you'll be doing. The question you fundamentally have to answer is, do the simplicity and increased peace of mind of the one by system outweigh the potential drawbacks, which are pretty simple. You get less range and bigger jumps between gears. Now, unfortunately, the nature of those drawbacks are a bit more complex than you might think. So again, I recommend checking out the numerical analysis video in the description if you really want to see the numbers laid out. Sorry, this is like the 10th time I've referenced that video. Now, the other criticisms of the one by system, like worse chain lines and the resulting frictional losses, I don't really buy into. Mostly because I think if you're even considering going one by on a drop bar bike, then you're probably planning to do some amount of off-road riding where increased rolling resistance and dirt and mud are going to slow you down way more than a few watts lost on a bad chain line. Also, in my experience, it's kind of rare to see a cyclist actually shifting a 2 by drivetrain properly without ever unnecessarily cross-chaining, so I'm kind of calling that point a wash. Well, I think that's going to do it for this one. The goal of this video was to provide you with my personal experiences riding both the GRX 1 by and 2 by mechanical drivetrains on a drop bar gravel bike and relate them back to the calculated values. So I hope I've done that at least a little bit, and I hope you have perhaps one more first-hand perspective on the matter as you decide for yourself which system makes the most sense. Now in the meantime, you can also check out some other nerdy bike videos over here, and I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking about going one by or two by on a drop bar bike down in the comments, but be nice and let's try and keep things civil. Anyways, thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.